Here, you know what? Let me let me grab your number. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. But uh, we should absolutely hang out. What is it? Is it a three four seven number? It's eight four five. Eight four five. What's my name? What? What's my name? Sorry. You don't even know my name. Oh, your name is. Mar See, I remembered your name, but you didn't remember my name. So Sorry, it's really Tamid. Tamid? Yes. You never told me your name. Are you Hispanic? What's up, guys? This is Tamid, aka the Introvert Playboy, and I'm here now to talk about something that is quite important in this whole realm of game, which is approaching out of state. Now, to begin, let's describe what state is. It's basically your vibration or your energy while you're out there interacting with people and just kind of the aura that comes out of you and everybody around you can kind of sense it and they react accordingly to what you're giving off. Now oftentimes people get out of state, you know, it can happen for a variety of reasons. You know, the most basic being, you know, you don't have the essentials covered. You know, you have bad sleep patterns, a bad diet, maybe you're not working out consistently, whatever the case may be on those basics, like not getting enough sunshine, you're going to be out of state more often than not. Uh, it goes beyond that as well, uh, on a higher tier, you know, if you're unsatisfied with your job, maybe you're unfulfilled in your purpose, bad relationships with your friends, your family, uh, woman problems, these will all contribute and kind of bring you down while you're out there trying to do your thing. And uh, it's important to know that everybody gets out of state, alright, you can't be happy and fulfilled and on point 24-7, you know, it's just not appropriate to think that of yourself you know you're gonna be down sometimes and you have to act you know no matter how you feel so to give some premise on the video you're about to watch you're gonna see two infield clips of mine uh, taken a few days ago I went out there and I was completely out of state I was not feeling it at all you know uh, I, I could give all the excuses you know it was a really hot fucking day it was like 90 degrees out there humid sticky you know I was hot sweaty and cranky uh, what else? It was uh, actually it was a 9/11 that day, so it, it was a weird vibe in the city. You know, I live in New York, so it's kind of a big deal out here. And uh, yeah, you know, I just also on another point out at that time, like this entire week, I have been getting my essential vitamins drained multiple times. You know, through girlfriends, I actually reunited with one of my girls, so we kind of had a passionate reunion. And a lot of times, people don't talk about. Having uh, consistent sex with girls actually brings down your game at times because you're just not as motivated or, you know, out to get it as some guy who hasn't ejaculated in a couple of days. You know, I know personally my game is at its best when I haven't ejaculated in a couple of days. But that's a topic for another video. I'll definitely be touching upon that because I've given it a lot of thought. But to stay on topic here, approaching out of state, like I said, is everybody gets out of state. The question is, what do we do about it? Uh, let's see. The first one is to understand that uh, it all comes down to the discipline, right? So even if you are feeling out of it, you know, you could still force yourself to get into interactions and that's ultimately the only thing that will help you. You know, a lot of people will say, a lot of people do a lot of crazy things. You know, you'll see these videos of people, you know, high-fiving strangers on the street, busting out push-ups in the middle of a crowd, all, even simpler things like talking with your wings, building yourself up. You know, those things could help, they could give you a boost, but at the end of the day, it's not going to really get you to the point where you want to go. The only thing that will do that is to actually go up and talk to a girl. It sounds simple, but it's not. All, but to get out of the state, you have to go into an interaction. I'll repeat, get into an interaction. One more time, if you are at a state, the only way to get back into gear is to get into an interaction. And it is a lot more complicated sometimes than it seems. You know, obviously your best game will be run when everything is seamless, it's easy, you're feeling good in your body, you're feeling good in your mind, you're looking good on the outside. Of course, you're gonna have a great game at that time. But you can't always expect that of yourself. And when those days come, then you're gonna have to really dig deep into your internal resources and you know, go out there and make something happen for yourself. Excuse me, miss. Alright, I know this is kinda random, but I was about to head over to the park and I seen you. Thought you looked very nice today, so I had to Run up and come meet you very quickly before you walked off to wherever you were going. Hi, right, what's your name? Wherever you headed off to, you look like you had a very determined look on your face, like you were on a mission or something. Fish phase or well, see, I said determined and on a mission, but if you want to say resting bitch face, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Where are you headed off to? Uh, I'm going to meet a few friends and watch the park. Watching the square park? And. What's that? 
Oh, downtown? Yep. Oh, that's really cool. How was your interesting day? But I'm sorry, this is very impromptu. I don't usually do it, but for some reason, I'm like, yes, I have to approach this cute Chinese lady. Are you Chinese, by the way? Korean. You're Korean? Yeah. Uh, from Seoul? I'm just kidding, I'm Chinese. Oh, you are Chinese? Yep. My mom actually went to China, uh, like at 3 o'clock in the morning yesterday. She's going to Guangzhou and then from there to oh, Shanghai. I'm from um, the town next to Guangzhou. Really? Yeah. What's it called? Shenzhen. Shenzhen? You do have to go and you have a boyfriend who's part of an Asian... Or is that like an engagement ring or just like no, a promise a, ring type thing? Ring. So uh, is he here with you or is he in China or something? He is Indian. Yeah. Is he? Oh, so you have a thing for brown guys? No, I do. Now you do. So I got to ask. I know you're probably biased. Who's the more handsome one of the two? Me or your oh, Indian him. boyfriend? Definitely, definitely him? Oh, no, that's I a shame. Answer. Well, it is what it is. It was very nice to meet you. Uh, I'm sorry, what was your name? Appreciate it. I hope I see you around, alright? Uh, have a good rest of your day. Very well. Alright, so the interaction you just seen was actually my first set of the day. Now to give some context on it, I was walking around with my uh, partner slash cameraman. I felt really bad because I dragged him out there in that fucking 90 degree weather and I was kind of just fucking around, not approaching. And we were walking around for a good 20 minutes without doing shit. So finally, I'm like, fuck it, man. After walking back and forth around the park, I'm like, we got to fucking get into set. And that's exactly what I did. I saw this cute-ass, leggy Asian girl walking past. And I decided to go run up after her and just break the ice and see what would happen. And, uh, you know, the set, it went all right, I guess. You know, I could definitely saw there was some attraction in the girl's eyes, but I wasn't really on point. You know, my body language was kind of closed off. I was in my head. I was not really sure of what to say. And as a result, you know, she told me she had a boyfriend and I cut the set short and I was like, walk away. And that was that. And I didn't get down on myself for that. I actually felt really good because I finally got out of the way. The most important thing is just get that first set out of the way. And then your shoulders feel lighter, your brain neurons are firing faster, and you just, you just feel more ready to go. As opposed to when you first get out to, you know, the venue, day or night, whatever the case may be. When you first go out to game and you haven't yet got that first interaction in, you're going to be feeling some type of way until you get it out the way. So that really was what it was, you know, we call it a sacrificial lamb. You know, I didn't coin that term. I think it came from uh, Julian and RSD. I saw a video of it back in the day, you know, where he states that the first couple approaches you do is kind of just to, you know, get yourself in a gear. You're not necessarily trying to seduce the girl or run any stellar pickup. You're just trying to get yourself into flow. So that's exactly what I did. You know, I got myself into gear and literally right after that approach, uh, I saw the second girl I was going to approach walk right past me and I dove right in, you know, with no hesitation and uh, the a second approach actually went a lot better. Excuse me, lady with the curly hair. Hi, I know it's kind of random, but I was about to go meet my friends by Tish and I seen you. I thought looked absolutely gorgeous today. So I had to come run and meet you before you went to wherever you were headed off to. Thank you Hi. so much. I really appreciate it. What's your it. name? Marissa. Marissa, where were you headed off to with such a determined look on your face? <laughs> I'm uh, actually sick, so I'm going to go to the doctor, but I need to get... Are you really, am I going to catch like some crazy disease I, by I shaking hope your hand? I not, so... What do you have? Is it like influenza or are you just being dramatic today? No, I'm just like actually feeling sick. Really? Yeah. Do you have like a super strict doctor that's going to be mad if you miss your appointment because you met a handsome gentleman on the sidewalk? <laughs> no, okay. Do you, do you go to NYU? I do. You just got out of class or something? Um, kind of, yeah. What was it, like Humanities 203? You look like a yes, very... Sir. Really? What, what do you think I'm majoring in? You look like a very artsy fart kind of chick. Am I right or... I am? Yeah. Oh, so I thought you were going to be like... I, do. No. I don't know, like a paleontologist or like a painter or something? No. Uh, I'm in musical theater, so... Musical theater? So you're one of those theater dorks? I'm sorry, you get this very often. It's like, oh, not another random man approaching me while I'm on my way I mean, to the goddamn doctor. Yeah. Where is this doctor, by the way? It's over there. But it's over there? So you, you, you got your chickened out and now you're leaving? to go over there. Well, you have to pay I the have doctor in cash or something, the blood money? How much is it? It's $10. $10? I have no cash. Where, are you going to ATM? No, I'm just going to my dorm. Oh, where do you live, Brittany? Brooklyn. You're a freshman? Yeah. From, you're not from New York, are you? Oh, you are? Mm -hmm. From the Bronx? How'd you know? I just know. I know. I know a Bronx this is girl weird. This when is I. Getting a little creepy I know a right Bronx now. girl when I see her. Here, I'll walk you down because I'm about to. I'm probably gonna go to the park later. I told him I was meeting by Tish, but are fuck you, Tish. Are you sure? 
Yeah. Well, I, I technically I go to the University at Buffalo, but I'm taking a semester off. I don't think I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go back. But I told my mom it's a semester off. But I'm from New York. I'm from Queens though. So I'm kind of always in the city anyway. So I wasn't smart enough to get into NYU, unfortunately. I don't know. I felt like I kind of was like wasting my money because I was there. It was. I was getting run down, believe it or not. I was like, it was really fun when I was like 18, 19. But then I'm like, oh, I'm getting too old for this. You know what I mean? But uh, it's like, I didn't like how cold it was. It was like freaking crazy snow and blizzard and all this insane stuff. Uh, they don't let us. They don't let us. San Juan? No. What part? Nunca San Isidro, Amarilla. Is that like the tropical island place with all the palm trees? Uh, I guess. Very interesting. Have you gone there this summer or did you just stay uh, in New two York? Two summers ago I visited. Really? So what did you do this summer? This summer I was sleeping. Just um, sleeping? Yeah, oh, that's I so was disappointing. Not on the grind. Oh man, you weren't doing any musical theater shit. I did, I did. Like some street performance, perhaps. Have you no, ever done that before? No street performance. No street performance. My friend and I like we sing all the time. We were like, we should put a hat out or something. Oh, you're a singer? Yeah, musical. Wow. I thought you were just the one who like designed like the curtains and decorations on the what? stage and shit. No. no, I'm just playing with you. I'm being mean. I don't know why. I should be nicer to a stranger. Um, yeah, I guess so. And I, I left my chloroform in my other jeans today, so you're actually safe. Don't worry. Uh, my, I know you don't get this very often, so you're probably worried about the serial killerness. But uh, my serial killer days are behind me, thankfully. I made a New Year's resolution to be a better person. Good to know. But um, what do you uh, usually get up to uh, after class when you're not singing with your friend or sleeping because you're boring and lame? So as you can see in the second interaction, it went a lot better. You know, it stretched out a lot further than the first one. And uh, that was because, you know, I built the momentum off that initial approach and brought it over to my next one. As you can see here, you know, I'm still very stifled in this clip, don't get me wrong. You know, I'm still in my head, I'm still feeling shitty and out of it, and I'm still annoyed at myself and the situation. But I still just, you know, try to put my emotions to the side as best as I could and go in and do what I know is right. You know, and after a certain time, after you've done, you know, hundreds upon hundreds of, maybe even thousands of approaches at this point, like I have, you know, you begin to fall back into a routine and your brain knows what to do. You know, oftentimes you'll find the most, you know, troubling and hard thing to do is just initially getting your attention. You know, tapping her on the shoulder and saying, hey, and introducing yourself. That's the hardest part. Once you're actually in there, you're going to be feeling a lot more comfortable. You're going to be feeling a lot more confident. And your body is just going to be feeling a lot more at ease and ready to go. So that's basically how it goes, you know, like... At the end of the day, you know, you want to just get into that interaction. It's very simple. Just get into that interaction. That's honestly, pretty much it. Really? Like, it's really lame. Um, I mean, I was like, promoting those, like, NYC Welcome Week parties, but they were so trash. Were they really? All right, there's no alcohol. There's not. So there's not, not, right? Uh, you know a party's going to be trash if there's no alcohol. Yeah. Um, but it was not going this way. Like, um, I'm probably going to stop out here, my friend. It was, like, like guys who couldn't who were drinking for the first time and couldn't handle their alcohol like yeah. throwing up on my dance floor it was actually really awful. can you handle your alcohol or also uh, once to up on the dance floor yeah. do you partake in the marijuana as well um so he's a singer Mm -hmm. um, if it's on fire, I am not. Oh, it. really? But, like, do you do the millennial thing with like the vape pen and shit like yeah, that? Yeah. Really? See, I was gonna prove. Like, I think they're alright, but they're so like, they're way too easy to get high from. Like, see, if I had a wax pen, I would just be yeah. smoking all the time. Like, yeah. the fact that I have to like roll up my weed and like leave my house and like find a discreet place to smoke, <laughs> it like, it keeps it capped, you know? So I try to smoke like maybe like twice a day. You know, because I don't like, I don't, yeah, like once in the morning, like I, and I try to be productive when I smoke too, like I just smoke uh, while I do my work, it actually makes me better at my job, but uh, it's like before, like when I was younger, I would just like kind of just like watch Netflix all day and just like eat cheese doodles and just fuck around and be lazy, but uh, now I try to be a little bit more on point with my shit, you know what I mean? What are you watching on Netflix, by the way? I know you're a big Netflix girl. If you sleep a lot, then that means you also Netflix a lot. They go, they go, they go hand in hand. Listen, I, I am the same way. I love to sleep and I love to Netflix. And I'm very shy, believe it or not. I don't really go out of my way to meet people often. Only when they have curly hair and they're from the Bronx. Then, then uh, I'll take that chance, you know. 
But uh, we should absolutely hang out one of these days when you're not going to a doctor's appointment or, I don't know, sleeping. Yeah, you're being, sure. Unless you have a, a boyfriend from the Bronx who's like in a gang or something that probably stabbed me. I don't me. live in the Bronx. Oh, you, oh yeah, you do dorm here. How come you? How come you didn't just commit like everybody else? Are you like I, mandated to I, dorm when I you're a freshman? Born in the Bronx. I don't. I moved um, upstate, like an hour. Have you heard of the Woodbury Commons? The Outlet Mall? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was actually the there like two weekends right ago. The Wait, so you're from upstate New York? Yes. Oh. So I was raised in the Bronx since I was like seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. You know what? Let me let me grab your number. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. But uh, we should absolutely hang out. What is it? Is it a three four seven number? It's eight four five. Eight four five. What? That's my name. Sorry. You don't even know my name. Oh, your name is Mercy. Yeah. See, I remembered your name, but you don't remember my name. So Sorry. it's really Timid. Timid. Yes. You never told me your name. Are you Hispanic? I'm not. Where do you think I'm from? Don't be lame. You have to do at least one guess. See, I guessed you. I don't want to be offensive. No, you won't offend me. I'm very uh, hard to offend. I can't tell. Uh, you're not Hispanic at all. I'm not Hispanic at all. Unless uh, my mom had an affair. Like <laughs> South America? Nope. Um, Europe? Europe? No. Uh, I'm from Asia. From Asia? From Asia. I can't guess. I'm from Bangladesh. Well, my parents are from Bangladesh. I'm from Queens. Uh, have you heard of it? I have. Have you exactly. made any Bengali friends in the Woodbury Common area? No. No? So I'm your first one? I guess so. I'm honored. I really do hope I see you again. Yeah. And you're not a stranger. Nice you. I'm really glad I met you, by the way. You have to give me a tiny little cup. No, no. No? no. Not Maybe. on the first meeting. Not on the first meeting? Well, it was very nice to meet you. I hope I see you again. Good luck at the doctors, all right? Be well. So some people may just need one. Some people need a few. In any case, after you do whatever, you know, maybe two or three approaches, you're going to be feeling more talkative. You're going to be feeling more, quote unquote, in state. That low vibrational energy will kind of shift away and the clouds will see you through to your actual goal. And you always got to keep your goal in mind. What are you out there to do? You know, usually I say uh, have a minimum of 10 girls that you talk to. You know, in the case that you don't hook a live fishy, so to speak, you should be upping the volume. You know, another thing that tends to happen to people, you know, they might start off strong. But, you know, the day kind of drags on and maybe, you know, they, their energy level goes down. They go a long time, you know, in between their interactions, which is a, another big killer. You don't want those big chunks of space in between your sets. You know, you want to be having it flow repeatedly, repeatedly. You don't want to be spending a huge amount of time in inactivity because that's just going to make you tired. You're just going to be walking around, you know, burning your energy endlessly. And I could say this because I've fallen victim of it too many times until... You know, I finally snap out of it. And, you know, I still fall into it sometimes and uh, have to really focus on, on bringing it back out. And uh, again, just to cover on the basics, you know, make sure that you're well fed and well hydrated before going out there. You know, you don't want to go out into the field on an empty stomach and you're just going to be, you know, out of energy and cranky and you won't be able to game. You know, if you do go out there and, you know, you're out there for a longer time, you know, take 30 minutes to an hour and get a good meal in you before, you know, hitting the field again because. Again, if you don't have these bases covered, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure. Uh, another really big one that fucks guys up is actually wings. You know, wings are, could be a very valued asset, you know, someone to build yourself up, someone to motivate you to do approaches. But I've met many guys within this community who just kind of bullshit around with their guys and don't really take action and just mentally masturbate and burn each other out without getting any things done. So you have to be very conscious about, like, what is going in and what is coming out and who is coming in and who is coming out. You just have to be very mindful. You have to conserve your energy. You have to use your energy wisely and you have to make the most of your time. You know, if you're out there wasting your time, you're going to beat yourself up about it. If you're frustrated, you're not going to be able to hook girls the way you want to. You just want to be on point. So I say, write down your goal before you head out there. You want to do 10 approaches, do those 10 approaches no matter what. The only time you deviate from that plan is if, again, you get a live fishy and you have to spend some time working it, then it's absolutely fine to forego. Maybe you meet that girl, the sixth girl you met, then don't talk to the other four girls. Focus on the one girl that you hooked. But if you're getting kind of lackadaisical sets, then keep burning them, keep churning through them until you hit your goal, no matter how you feel, and see it through to the end. So again, just have the basics covered. Be very in tune with your body and your mind. 
and just make things happen there, fellas. And uh, this is actually a multi-part video because it's a very vast topic. This is just part one. So I have the two infield clips, this uh, small breakdown. Uh, expect more content in the future, so make sure you like the video, subscribe, and there's a lot more on the way, so be in tune for that.